this webinar is built around all the conversations I've been having with my fellow HR people out there. It's based on, on what people are doing to make this work. But I don't have all the answers, but I'm very keen on that we start discussing these matters. And that's why we're here. You have to take it for what it is. Once again, this is my perspectives and my perspectives only. But I hope you can utilize some of those perspectives, implement them at work where you work as well. That's the aim of this session. Let's start first with this sentiment. If you, if you open an article, if you listen to a webinar, if you listen to a podcast, this is the sentiment that most people say, that HR will be not be replaced by machines. Uh, HR will be replaced by humans who use machines. And I would add, for now, because if you see where the world is heading, it's heading towards a future where HR actually will be replaced by machines. And, and I think this is, I wouldn't say it's a lazy statement, but somewhat a lazy statement that, you know, we'll be fine. It's all fine and dandy. We, we don't need to worry about this. And I think we should worry a bit about this. And I, that is also why we're here, because I think that we should make conscious decisions in regards to AI, not just let it happen. I just wanted to say that because that's a pet peeve of me, my, my almost right now that I really don't want to want that to uh, have it to happen. Why should you care about this? Like obviously the strategic impact and all of that, that says in the title, if, if you look at the benefits of using AI, and this is ChatGPT specifically that I will talk about now, the benefits that companies and organizations have seen from utilizing AI, what are those? And this is the first thing that I, we should mention. This is a BCG study that was conducted in August uh, last year where they looked at, okay, what efficiency gains could we gain from using ChatGPT specifically? And this is specifically for HR as well, I should say. And what they concluded was that you could see a 30% efficiency improvement if you start utilizing ChatGPT in your day-to-day -day HR work. And we all know BCG and McKinsey, I love you, all of you with the management consultants, but they tend to skew a bit on the higher side when anticipating stuff like this. Even if we see a 30% efficiency improvement, if you tone that down, we say we see a 10% efficiency improvement, that's still a huge gain for us. If we can utilize that, that means that you will get a half day back if you start utilizing ChatGPT, which according to this study then is not unrealistic. Once again, a BCG study, got to take for what it is. It's not a scientific study, but we do actually have one scientific study that is called the JAG Frontier. It's a Harvard study. They did a study on BCG consultants where they said to one group of BCG consultants, you, you really need to use ChatGPT in everything that you do. In all tasks that you do, please use ChatGPT. And then they said to another group, never use ChatGPT. You are not allowed to use AI at all. And then they compared the two groups. And what did they, what was the conclusion of the study? They saw that the group who used ChatGPT, very specifically than ChatGPT in this case, they finished 12.2% more tasks on average compared to the group who didn't use ChatGPT. That was one thing. They did it 25% roughly quicker as well. Not only did they uh, compile more tasks, they also did them quicker uh, than the group who didn't use that. And they did that with 40% higher quality results. It was faster, it was more efficient, and it was also with higher quality, which is I think a very interesting. And of course, it's one study, so we shouldn't draw too much conclusions for, from this as well. We can draw some, I think, but it's one study. It's not peer reviewed yet. Once again, you have to take it for what it is, but I think it shows an interesting path that if we start utilizing this, if we find the balance between when do we use it and when do we not use it, we could see similar results. And even if we have this, like if this is a magic aspiration that we can't reach, even if we reach half of these results, I think that's still a huge improvement for organizations. And most of at least the CEOs, CEOs I've been working with uh, in the past, if I came to them and said, like, could you, would you like a 5% efficiency improvement in your organization? I'm fairly certain that most would say that would be fantastic. How do we do it? It's not perhaps easily solvable, but it's at least solvable and an opportunity as well. And, and another interesting fact from this study as well is that the, the most, uh, it was most impactful for people who were deemed to be less skillful or that you maybe were early in your career, then you got the biggest advantage of using AI to leverage that skill, which is once again, it acted as a lever almost like you, you could take a junior person and get a senior output. Once again, super interesting for us in HR, if we can get people up to speed faster and make them more senior quicker, that's also strong efficiency gain. 
for us at least. But what's the caveat here? There has to be a caveat, right? Yes, there's one caveat, and that is that you need to, in order to gain these efficiency improvements, you need to have an almost intuitive feel for when to use ChatGPT and not. And they call this then the Jack Frontier, that you need to be able to walk the line when to use ChatGPT and when to not use ChatGPT. That's the caveat of all of this. Like you, in order to gain those efficiencies, you need to be very proficient in how to use ChatGPT. Hence, you need to try that a lot. You can overcome that hurdle quite easily by using ChatGPT, but it still requires an effort. And I'll come back to that very shortly. Because that is the million dollar question then, also that's why we're here. How do we do this then? How do we gain these efficiencies in our organizations? And I, I, I want to remind you again, this is my perspectives. I know there's other perspectives out there. You have, once again, take it for what it is. It's not the full truth, it's my perspectives. <laughs> you always need to apply your own thinking, but hopefully this can serve as inspiration. And this is also, once again, captured from a lot of conversations with mainly HR people. Out there as well. I call it the three T's because being inspired by management consultants, this is my time to play a uh, management consultant and, and really introduce the concept of three uh, T's out there as well. And th the first T is time, because what successful organizations do when it comes to implementing AI in their organization is that they set aside time. It sounds obvious and it is to some extent, but still it's many organizations struggles and many people struggle with setting aside the time. Time is really of essence here. You need to dedicate time in learning this new way of working. And we all know how an, a day in, in, in the life of an HR looks like for most part, like it's a lot of things going on. People get sick, there's you know, performance reviews to be had, there's an issue with someone over here, and you, you don't have a lot of free time in your calendars usually, hence you need to dedicate the time in order to change the way you're working. And that is why also why I have it here, that you need to dedicate time. And it's universal through all organizations or all people that I've been spoken, uh, speaking to, they've set aside time one way or another to learn this new way of work. And then obviously set aside time for learning, that it's, it's always done. But it is not connected to time. But I think also what the truly successful companies have done is not only that they've dedicated time, they've also dedicated budget and resource to actually going out, finding learning opportunities within this. Either it's on free ones, like on YouTube or yeah, webinars like this, or they've dedicated budget time to really allocate an external speaker. There's a lot of external speakers out there doing this already now, or courses, whatever it might be. And th there's a mix. but. Those who really take advantage of this, they've dedicated some kind of budget to it as well. Where do I learn all of this stuff? You could take a course. There's a ton of courses. I have one. I will plug that very soon, but I have a course. You can take courses. There's, if you have LinkedIn learning, there's uh, several courses on generative AI and HR as well. Ton of resources out there as well on, on Udemy or as I said, YouTube, a lot of inspiration on YouTube, not so much HR specific information on YouTube. But there is uh, instances where people put up the YouTube videos in regards to a HR and AI as well, and a ton of resources with AI in general and ChatGPT specifically. So it's a really good resource if you're keen on learning without having to pay a lot of money. As mentioned, podcasts and webinars like this as well. And podcasts, when it comes to podcasts, I, I have two that I really like listening to when it comes to AI. One is Josh Bursin. He's a fantastic resource. I think what he's sharing is usually very good and he's sharing a lot of AI stuff uh, lately. And then a paid version, uh, unfortunately, I would say, but it's, it's very fortunate because it's a very good podcast, which is not specifically AI and HR, but it's Stratechery. And Stratechery is more like broadly covering the ins and outs of the tech industry, which I think is really good. And obviously a lot of the topics lately has been relating to AI, but really broadens at least my thinking in regards to this. And webinars like you're attending one right now. And I mentioned my course and I, my friends always tell me that you should really make a conscious effort around promoting your course because you give away stuff for free, which I do and I really love doing, but I have this course, learnaiinhr.com. It's not free you have to pay to get access. I could be very wrong about this. It, I think it's the only HR and AI course created by someone who works in HR. And I did this over summer. So I go, I, I went to my wife and asked, can I take vacation from our vacation to do a course? That's the story about that. But once again, if you want it, sign up for it. There's a free version as well, where you can sign up for a, for a trial, where you get the ethics part of the course. If you go to learnaiinhr.com 
and th that's, then you can do that. I'm done with the commercial break. Let's uh, move on with the transparency part because that's the second D. And transparency, what do I mean with that then? Transparency is, is all about removing the stigma. And I, I don't know how many people that have spoken to me about this, that there's still a stigma connected to ChatGPT or using ChatGPT when solving tasks. Universally, all people, all my friends who's come a long way on this journey towards using AI in their day-to-day -day work and having specifically then ChatGPT solve problems for them, they made conscious efforts about removing that stigma uh, about the feeling of, can I really use this? Can I do this in my day-to-day -day work? Is this cheating? Do I take a shortcut here? This is not really me doing the work. This ChatGPT, is that okay or not? And how do you do that? You're open around that you use ChatGPT. That, that, it sounds simple, but still requires, once again, an effort. And the most prominent example of ha I have of this is that I, I talked to an HR manager uh, or CHRO last week that said that what we do now is that we have five minutes at the end of every team meeting where we uh, share what, have, what problems have we solved with ChatGPT this week. Every week for, I don't know how long, a couple of months at least, they've done that. And now they've overcome the hurdles. That was her best trick around this as well. And that's, I, I really like that because that created them an openness around, okay, this, it, it's, an, it's allowed to use ChatGPT and it's actually promoted to use ChatGPT to solve problems. And they've seen true efficiency gains from this. And they were about to hire, once again, we can argue if this is right or wrong, but they were about to hire an HR admin to their team, quite a large team already, but now they deem that position to not be necessary because they have ChatGPT and ChatGPT solves admin tasks for them as well. They can redistribute that work between the coworkers that they already have. Once again, is ChatGPT taking our jobs or not? Or is AI taking our jobs or not? One can argue that's one of the things. Talk about it all the time. The more you talk about it and the more openness you have around it, the better. That, that is what, at least what I've seen and what I've heard as well in regards to that. Talk about it and, and remove, try to remove that stigma. Try to increase transparency around this as well. Uh, and the last T, the, the last of my management consultants, consultant the feeling is together. The together part is obviously, I like doing things together in general. I hope that you do too. That's why we're in an organization and not solo workers. But I really like doing it together and I really like doing roundtables. And what I mean with roundtables is basically that you take a problem or you take a problem statement in regards to AI. It could be ethics, could be should we allow use or not, allow the use of ChatGPT or not. And you bring that to a roundtable as a discussion point to get people's different perspectives. Because once again, it's like this is a new area where things are moving very fast. And by bringing those perspectives together, I think that you will have a better output. And that's also why I've heard from people that when you come together and you talk about it, then you get better output. As said, like different perspectives and it's more fun. Usually I think it's way more fun to do stuff together. So if you come together, you will hope at least, I wouldn't take it for granted, it depends on the team that you have, but it's usually way more fun. And this also helps with the transparency part. If you do it together, you get that natural when you start talking about, okay, this is how I solve it. This is how I do it. So you go back and forth and then you do it together. But you shouldn't diminish the fun aspect as well, because this can be scary for people. It, it is an area of high uncertainty. What do I do with this? How will this be? And by doing it together, and not only do you remove the stigma, you also create this feeling of, okay, we're in it together. So I really like it when you talk uh, together and you do it as a job exercise. And if you struggle with this, because that's also a common thing that I get like, oh, but we don't know so much about AI. What should we do? Can we discuss this? We need an expert coming in and telling us what to do. You have an expert, ask ChatGPT. Hey, can you help me with the round tables? We need to help preparing a round table discussion. Can you help us? And, not? and this is really on the basis of the that, that you can utilize ChatGPT to learn about ChatGPT. So don't shy away from asking that question to ChatGPT itself. Hey, this is what we're doing. Can you help us? And you're, you can also utilize ChatGPT as a resource to learn more and to get um, a good foundation, if you're facilitating it, to get a good foundation to stand upon going into the round tables. I'm the facilitator. What do I need to know? How do I create an engaging session? Utilize ChatGPT to solve chat GPT problems, right? And I have one extra resource as well, because we're uh, embarking so towards the end here, or we're coming up to the end, because this is just a, one more thing here, because a lot of people are 
they don't have access to the latest model of ChatGPT4. And because that's the latest model and you have to pay for that. But if you want a free version of ChatGPT4, then you go to Bing.com and you click what I clicked here, the creative part. So if you go to that, you'll get free access to GPT-4. Obviously, you should always think about, and this is a seminar where I talk about how to use ChatGPT, but I, you, I should also mention here that it's not a safe environment. It's, it's a connected environment. We don't really know where the data might end up because it trains on the data you input here. So bear that in mind. But still, it's a free version. So if you have general things that you want to ask, and you want GPT-4 for free, go to bing.com. I never thought I would say that you should go to Bing for anything, but here we are. I'm the first one to admit that I'm sometimes wrong. So that's what you can do as well. So there you have it. That's the extra thing, but you have the three Ts. You have time, you have transparency, you have together. That's what I've been hearing from people. I wouldn't say like magically implemented it all across their HR department, but at least they've started working with this AI thing. It's really what they've done in order to be successful and what I've seen also work talking to people.